uh, we're exactly what it says on the tin. Bureau of Silly Ideas is exactly what it says on the tin, or in this case, the van. And we generally look at taking things that people don't normally like and twist them into something that they will and use it as a point of focus. And we make things bigger than they should be quite often. It becomes a point of conversation for people. And we believe very strongly that the most important thing is to make people ask questions. Because only once they've asked questions and worked out what the good question is, will they get the right answer. Um, today we had the foot and the pineapple and of success, which we've been harvesting. We've got a few interesting stories. One I noticed was someone had finally got their roommates to do the washing up, so it was good to see. <laughs> and with the sweet smell of success, we are a big corporation called Bioorganisms Substrate Industries. We sponsor all sorts of events such as this and we harvest stories of success. And once we know where there's enough, a conglomeration of a high density of success levels, then we go there with a laboratory and we get people to tell us why they're successful and we take a little bit of their success. So when people are doing and re reusing memorial stimulation, to remember their stories of success. They go through the same emotions and they produce the same chemical as they did at the moment when they originally did that piece of success. And then we capture that chemical and we digitally transmit the information to our laboratory in Basingstoke. So one day we will manufacture the sweet smell of success for the betterment of mankind and our shareholders' profits. Now we, there's, today we had Annabelle came to visit. Adam, Annabelle's a plant that moves around and talks to people because why else wouldn't people believe that they could talk to plants and we've proved it, you can. <laughs> In this conference um, I met... Um, <coughs> hey. I met Georgie a few years ago in a... in Battersea Arts Centre at a... I uh, can't remember what it was, but it was a thing where we all met and talked and did some sort of conferences sort of world for a while, and we started to plan to work together with different stuff. Uh, my expectations were hopefully to make some people start thinking in ways they hadn't thought before, and to meet um, other people and find out where what's going on in the world of digital and live art and performance art and public spaces and how they, we see it going and its responsibility and role and passion and future for it in the UK, specifically with a little bit of international, but I was thinking a lot about the UK as we're in a state of flux. And I use them as a lot and I'm very interested in how they grow and develop and what the relationship is between people and the owners and the shareholders that are invited and the stakeholders. The stakeholders are very much a, the key to it and what their responsibilities are and if they should acknowledge them or even if they should have any and what and why. And, no, I think it's becoming a global thing and that's what's really interesting and potentially scary is a lot of public spaces are now being owned by multinational corporations around the world and adopting policies that they have here. So you have the same um, attitude towards hoodies in the shopping centre here as you do in the shopping centre in other countries because it's the same company at the background. And as we're getting it, our social behaviour patterns are being controlled on a global scale by new landowners. Yeah, they're, they, they do it. They, they exactly, but it's different with them because they own land for the temporary basis, so it's not always the Olympics, but they definitely do have a brand that they affect people's behaviour and how it, how it is when they're there. And well, some of it's good, the sport, there's a lot of good that comes out of the Olympics, but the controlling and the, the real element of where the money is definitely changes perceptions and use of land. We've got, and at, well, the one I can talk about is in the libraries, we hope, of the West Midlands. It's a pilot project where we're working with the big libraries, in the big library in Birmingham, and then other libraries in that area of the West Midlands as a pilot scheme that we hope will roll out. So in 15, we'll do a trial in about four different areas, and then in 16, we'll roll it out across the whole region of the West Midlands, which will be a couple of hundred libraries and a few million people engaged. Uh, it's to do, we're still writing it, so we don't know. And the conceit behind it, it will be a company that's a human resource company that has discovered airports. <laughs>
that has discovered that libraries are the ideal place to recruit people with superpowers to supply the secret services of the world with a special agent and the reason for that is all librarians have hidden superpowers and we're going to expose those and recruit people with superpowers and teach them how to have superpowers if they haven't already got them. I'm Roger and it's Bureau of Silly Ideas.